What's going on, guys? This is something that's going to be something you got to keep your eye on for 2022. December, the unemployment first time filings for unemployment insurance was at about 900,000. And it started to spike. So this is something that we're going to have to look at going forward because the great resignation, all of these people are quitting their jobs and they're moving on to new jobs and they're doing all this other stuff. Yet there was this company, I think better.com that laid off 900 people on a zoom call. So during December, a lot of people were not looking to quit their job. They got laid off. They got fired. They had to file unemployment benefits. And if what I feel, what I think, what I should say, what I think is going to happen is as the stimulus economy deleverages, we're going to see more and more of these unemployment filings. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens the end of January because strange, strange thing is happening. I don't know. And I may do a whole video on this, but have you guys noticed that customer service absolutely sucks right now? If you're trying to get some stuff done or you got to call into a company, customer service is a hot mess right now and bad customer service is usually an indicator of a very good economy because the better people don't have to do those jobs, right? But this is different. This is really, really different. Um, one of the things that I am seeing, because like currently I have like 15 things I'm trying to get done and I'm waiting and I'm dealing with bad customer service. I'm dealing with uh, a serious situation. But here's the reality. People are starting to get laid off for real. And this could be part of the pandemic. The pandemic is just um, for Christmas and Christmas Eve, like thousands and thousands of flights got canceled and a lot of people got stranded. So you're having people who are getting laid off. You have people who are getting sick and this is impacting the economy. Uh, I don't think COVID is ever going to go away. I don't think this is something that's like, you know, it's going to be like, like the flu, the flu ain't going away. The flu comes every year and we just deal with it. And I think that's what's going to happen with COVID is this just going to be another one of the things that we have to deal with. Uh, we might be wearing masks next year. We might be wearing masks in 2024. Who knows? So what do the numbers tell? And I went back and I looked at unemployment 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. And currently our unemployment as of December, 2021 is 4.2%, which is pretty low unemployment. And we have like 6 million, almost 7 million people who are looking for a job. But th that's kind of weird because Right now we have restaurants, we have airlines, we have hotels who are desperately looking for people. So we have a whole bunch of jobs that no one wants. And this I think is a um, byproduct of the pandemic economy because I was having dinner with someone last night and we were just talking and everybody wants to do their own thing. Everyone wants to be their own boss. No one wants to, you know, fire your boss, work for yourself, make your own money, have uh, autonomy, have freedom, have the ability to do your own thing. Right? So with this situation that we're currently having, I feel that what's going to happen in 2022 is unemployment is going to continue to spike real unemployment, not pandemic based unemployment where the government said, Hey, you need to shut your business down. We're not talking about that type of unemployment. We're talking about marketplace driven unemployment where these companies cannot compete. And, um, this is why I'm starting a credit repair agency. 
Um, it's going to be a growth industry for the next five, seven years because of what's happened with the pandemic. You've got people who have a lot of bad credit and you've got some people who've had really bad situations. Maybe they got sick, they couldn't work. And then you have people who just don't have really good financial skills to begin with. But I feel, and I'll be talking about this each month because what we have to do is wait until the end of January. And historically, January and halfway of February is kind of slow because after Christmas. So there is a lull. So you can expect to see more people laid off or let go from their jobs. And we will see, cause like, I'm gonna do a totally separate video about this. Cause if you notice, I try to keep the videos tight and on point and I don't try to go over here and over there. But I will mention this. I feel that we're gonna have a recession in 2023 and it's gonna be a doozy. It's gonna be really, really rough. And what's gonna happen is people going from these situations of being laid off, of having these um, problems with unemployment. Because once again, this is one of the things that we're gonna have. We're gonna have unemployment spiking, we're gonna have automation spiking, and we're gonna have a lot, like the government is about to be ruthless. Like in my video with the new reporting standards of the Internal Revenue Service, that's going to become more of a thing because uh, I was thinking about that. Why would they do that? The government knows that people are doing whatever they can to do to make some money. And now they're about to inject themselves in that pipeline where you're going to have to pay taxes on money that you normally wouldn't have to pay taxes on. So this is going to be problematic, not for just this year, but going forward because a lot of people are not getting the memo and they're going to keep using Cash App Vimo, Zelle, and they're gonna keep using these apps and then they're gonna get a letter from the Internal Revenue Service because uh, when I was moving, I sold $3,400 worth of stuff through Cash App and Zelle and some of the transactions, just a single transaction crossed the $600 threshold. So this is not going to be something that's going to be uh, hard to cross one of the things that you're going to see going forward is a lot of people are going to get ensnared in these um regulatory guidelines a lot of people are going to have situations where they're going to lose their job and they're going to try to start a side hustle and this is one of the things because if you don't know and if you have some time you can check it out DoorDash videos, Instacart videos, Roadie videos, Amazon Flex videos. There is a whole gig economy that people are participating in. And going forward, there are going to be people who are never going to have like, quote, a normal job. They're going to participate in this gig economy. And what you're going to see are inflationary pressures on these gig economies because Uber, Lyft, they're going to keep changing the rules. They're going to keep switching it up. They're going to keep doing things. So what I feel going into 2020, 2023 is this is going to set the stage for a recession. Or, and there are many people who would argue that we're currently in a recession. Going back to my video, fuzzy numbers. Um, if the unemployment rate is 4.2% and everyone that wants a job can get one, I have a question. Why is the crime rate spiking? That doesn't make sense because why are people turning to crime? Because the, you know, you have your primary economy, which is when you go to Target or you buy something from Best Buy. You have your secondary economy, and this is something when you buy something off Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And then you have your underground criminal economy. That third economy is growing exponentially. It's getting bananas. Because <clears throat> one of the things you're gonna see 
And this is why, <clears throat> if you didn't know, I'm going to start a new personal finance channel. You have got to protect your money. Like, I'm going to say this, and this is a departure from this video. Stop using your debit card. Every time you swipe or tap or use your debit card, you expose your checking account to scamming forces. What you want to do is use a credit card, ideally a rewards credit card, that every time you use it, you get an additional benefit. Because if something funky happens with your credit card, you call up the credit card company, hey, um, I think someone stole my credit card. I'm recognizing these charges that I did not make. And they're gonna fix it really quick. What you're gonna see, because the scamming is gonna get so bad that banks are gonna be reluctant to make you whole. So you don't wanna even put yourself in that situation because with this massive unemployment, with everything that's going on, and I'm going to do a live training and um, I'll probably link it below on things that you need to do to protect yourself and to protect your money and protect your financial well-being. Because one of the things that, you know, for me, it's just as a business owner, there are certain things that I do and deploy to protect myself. Like with my business accounts, a lot of my business accounts, there's no debit card, there's no checking account. So for someone to actually get access to my business checking account, they will actually have to really work hard. They would have to work really, really hard to have access. So that's one of the ways because uh, that's a security measure because as a business owner, if someone stole like $50,000 out of my business checking account, I could have some problems trying to get that money back. So it is incumbent upon me to protect myself and to protect my money. And that's gonna be incumbent upon you to protect yourself and to protect your money. Because going forward, we're gonna go through some crazy, crazy stuff. Because like I said, unemployment, I feel is going to continue to spike. And unemployment is gonna get worse. Because once again, we have this stimulus economy that we're deleveraging from. And, you know, I feel that all the stimulus money is out of the economy. And now we're starting to deal with real economic marketplace forces, which are pretty damning at the moment. So what you're going to see and, you know, I'll do another video January 20 into January, probably beginning of February to see what happens with the unemployment numbers, because I have a feeling that the unemployment numbers are going to go up in January. They're going to go up in February. They're going to go up in March. They're going to go up in April. And this is going to set the stage because, you know, there are many people who feel that we're already in a recession and some people will use uh, the word depression. And you've, you've got to look at who's in the recession because Apple, the $3 trillion company is not in a recession. Apple is making more money than they've ever made before. So you have to look at segments of the economy, tech, uh, Facebook, uh, they're not in the recession. Uh, so you got Apple, Facebook, they're not in the recession, but who's in the recession? The average everyday common American is in the recession. These people who went from having to pay X amount of dollars for gas and food last year, who now have to pay an additional 600 to a thousand dollars for the same things they got last year with no improvement of value, no increase in value. That's who's in the recession. Uh, my video, the income danger zone, 75% of people are in the income danger zone in America, which is an income of $50,000 a year or less. So we have a lot of stuff that's going on. And I think we're just setting the stage because technically, from a technical standpoint, the United States of America is not in a recession. But if you start to get away from the technical analysis and start to dive into segmentation and look at this industry. Like, like I said, Apple's not in the recession. Facebook's not in the recession. Google's not in the recession. All these companies are making more money than they've ever made before. 
But when you look at trucking, you've got a lot of people who are getting into trucking. You have a lot of people in trucking who are going out of business because trucking is a high capital intensive business. I mean, you have to spend a lot of money to be in trucking. So when you start to look at the segments and you start to look at the normal everyday average American, that's when these recessionary depression like things start to emerge because let's say you have a job and you're working and you, you make $50,000 a year, you're married, you have two kids and your wife works and together y'all bring in like $90,000 a year. And before this pandemic thing, your life was fine. You were good to go. You were able to easily pay your obligations. But even though you're still making that 90, you've noticed things have gotten considerably tighter. When you go to the car, gas pump, you've noticed that gas has gone up tremendously. And you go to the grocery store, you notice the price of food has gone up. And you're just sitting there like, you're starting to feel some pressure. And this is setting the stage for you to be globally reset because it, it, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much because one of the things that I'm doing, because like I said, I'm getting ready to do a lot of trainings about financial abundance and things that you need to do to set yourself up to be successful in the future. One of the things that, um, that has emerged to me is like, you know, went to dinner last night, I was talking, how many people don't have an emergency fund. There are so many people who have no emergency fund. And I was just, you know, it was a date and we we're just talking. And this to me, this person's pretty smart. You know, she's in school, she's taking STEM stuff. And we were just talking and I just realized that how financially illiterate the average person is because you know, there were certain things that we should be taught in school, but we're not taught in school. You should be taught about credit cards in school. In my opinion, you should be taught about how to balance your check in the book. You should, you, this is stuff you should be because when you turn 18 and you go out and get a job, credit checking, all this stuff becomes part of your life. And a lot of people just wing it because this woman is going to be 32. And I was just really, and she's not dumb. No, not even close to dumb, but she is uneducated in financial literacy. And there are so many people who are uneducated in financial literacy because YouTube presents a strange snapshot because if you talk about stocks, you're considered a financial channel. And that's all you talk about. If you talk about budgeting, you're considered a financial channel. If you talk about personal finance, you're considered a financial channel, but there are very few financial channels that talk about all of the elements of being financially literate. And that's one of the reasons that I'm creating my new personal finance channel. It I'll like it isn't set up yet, so I can't point you in the right direction. But once I get that set up, I will. But what I see is so many people in trouble having bad situation because they don't know what they don't know. This is going to create such a situation for the general population because, you know, like I said, I'm starting a credit repair agency. And one of the things that I'm going to do is it's going to be three parts. First, we're going to teach you financial literacy because that's important because once we fix your credit, we don't want you to have bad credit again. So we're going to teach you financial literacy. We're going to fix your credit and then we're going to teach you how to make more money. So I call it the program. The link is below. And I already had a few um, test subjects and it's gone pretty well, pretty well. So one of the things that you should do during this phase is get out of debt. This is the get out of debt conversation, because if you have a lot of debt, this positions you to be globally reset. And I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's say you got $80,000 in student loan debt. You got a $30,000 in car payment. 
and then you've got maybe $20,000 in credit card debt. So that's $130,000 worth of debt that you have, which means that you, it's gonna be very hard for you to build a net worth, whereas an accumulation, because you're so far behind, you're so far in debt, and as long as you have your job and you can service that debt, you're okay. But the minute you lose that job and go into a free fall, I will tell you a story of some of my, my neighbors, my former neighbors. They pay cash for a house, they renovated the house, they pay cash, and this is a million dollar house. But because they've paid cash and they don't have car payments, they don't have a mortgage, they don't have normal bills, they're living in a million dollar house and it takes them about $3,000 a month to live. See, this is something that a lot of people who have earned a lot of money have come to realize that when you don't have a bunch of little bills, it doesn't take a lot of money to live. But when you have all of these obligations and payments, it can be very expensive to live. And essentially, you're never building a net worth. You're just steadily in a situation where you have a negative net worth. So we will be starting to address that. And I'll be starting to give some classes and all that stuff. So I will link that stuff below. But that's all I got for you guys. Once again, we've got a lot of stuff going on. It's 2022. Um, once again, I feel that unemployment is going to continue to go up and that's going, you know, this, this is something that we're going to have to watch every month to see what the numbers are, because it, it doesn't make sense to me that we have a 4.2% unemployment rate. We have record, you know, low, that's very low employment, yet we have rising crime. We have people starving. We have people struggling. We have people who can't pay their bills. So from a technical standpoint, no, we're not in a recession. But from a actual reality standpoint, and this is when you as the public consumer go to the gas pump, you go to the grocery store, you, you pay your electric bill, we're very much so in a recession from a practical standpoint, not from a technical standpoint. And I'll do a video breaking down what I call the Jedi mind trick. <laughs> That's gonna be a good one. So let me know your thoughts and concerns and I'll see you guys in the next one.